welcome everybody once again to another episode of one question a day the short notes today we are going to deal with this is the development of mandible the key points that are needed to be written for this is the exact week of the initiation in the of the mandible in the intra uterine life the role of meckel cartilage in the formation place where it is found cartilage of which arch the week at which it is formed from which structures forms which structures at what week how it acts as a scaffold for the mandible and the persistence of the cartilage in adult as the inner bones how mandible develops from this including the types of ossification growth of mandible development of lingual nerve innervation and blood supply diagrams along with diagrams would be appreciated so to begin with development of mandible it is advisable to draw a neat diagram of the entire processes of this particular diagram which you would have seen in your anatomy books mandible develops from the first arch is the single most important point and meckel's cartilage is the cartilage of first arch this cartilage is in close relation with the mandible but does not contributes majority to its development except for the small position portion in endochondral ossification we will come back to the meckel's role of meckel cartilage a little bit later in the form of a diagram where we say the proximal segment proximal aspect contributes and persists in the adult as the malleus in incus uh, the intermediate or central part the posterior part contributes to the anterior ligament of malleolus and the part to the spino mandibular ligament the anterior is totally resolved trans differentiation or undergoes apoptosis the anterior part contributes to mandibular symphysis in a small segment not fully going back that portion is the endochondral ossification it starts the mandibular nerve is the first structure to develop in the mandible and along is the development of the entire mandible stimulated over the bed on which this cartilage is meckel's cartilage it gives place rather the mandible develops in a bed of meckel's cartilage when the mandibular nerve develops first structure to develop in the mandible the mandibular mandible bone per se starts to develop medially mandibular nerve differentiates into the lingual nerve and the inferior alveolar nerve along the lateral the inferior nerve majoritically divides into incisor nerve developmental nerve the pathway in which the mandible starts to develop development of mandible through is both intramembranous and endochondral ossification though the latter is more common the intramembranous ossification gives rise or contributes to the body and ramus the majority part of the mandible whereas endochondral ossifications plays a big role in the condylar process coronoid process and symphysis menti region intramembranous ossification begins at about the 7th week and the first ossification center is at the either side of the symphysis menti between the incisive and the mental branch the ossification spreads anteriorly up to the symphysis menti posteriorly up to the division of mandibular nerve and this together contributes a major part of the body bill of the mandible whereas in the further posterior up to the area of lingula gives rise to the macramus of the bone the endochondral ossification begins a little bit later gives uh, coronoid cartilage begins at the fourth month disappears at birth so fourth month to one year of life and contributes to the formation of coronoid process the condylar cartilage is manifest a little bit late starts at about 12 weeks rapidly converted into bone and about 20 weeks the first only a thin layer of cartilage remains articulation of tmj and persists throughout the life the symphysial cartilage contributes to the two half of the symphysis menti fusing near to the midline that persists till up to one year of birth after which it fuses so this is more important the Uh, this diagram shows the role of the meckel's cartilage the posterior part contributes to the malleus and incus the central part and posterior anterior ligament of malleus spino mandibular ligament to extent anterior is resorbed the distal or anterior part contributes to the mandibular symphysis the clinical relevance when there is abnormality there could be a yeah, cleft of the mandible and that is very rare that is the clinical relevance and this is the entire thing if you are insistent and want to give a more detailed description for a short notes you can talk about the development of uh, lingual nerve innervation and blood supplies if time permits